Hi, I'm Gavin Vlietstra. I'm a technical specialist and STEM consultant here at Robotis. Um, uh, today I'm going to be showing you a continuation in my series on uh, how to use uh, Dynamixels with everyday electronics. Um, today it's going to be a little bit different. Um, before I was working with the uh, Arduino Shield um, with an Arduino, um, and that makes uh, adding electronics a lot easier. Um, but instead of using that hardware, today we're going to be using the OpenCM904 um, with, alongside with one of the buttons that we sell. It's a little bit more difficult to set up the uh, digital connections with the uh, OpenCM904 due to the pins being soldered on this way, especially with the, uh, the expansion board attached. Uh, if you were going to uh, be using the pins often or for different things, uh, I would suggest putting in some long tail headers, that way you would have access. Um, I also, there's also these, uh, these digital pins here, um, which my, uh, the button from Robotis is plugged into. There's four, um, and each of these, uh, well, not each of these, but some of the pins on these will correspond to the digital pins on uh, the microcontroller. Um, and if you take the time to map them out, you can you'd figure it out. Um, I have a, a little guide here telling you what each of the the pins goes to uh, so that I'm able to attach other hardware to it. All right, but let's uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch into uh, my display capture. All right, here we are inside of uh, the uh, the capture inside of Arduino. Um, we're working with the OpenCM904 board today, which means that if you don't have that board inside of your uh, your Arduino IDE, you're going to have to get it via the board manager. Um, to do to be able to see it, you have to go into preferences and you have to add uh, the URL from Robotis. Uh, you can it'll be in the description below, or you can find it by going to our e-manual, going to Parts Controllers, OpenCM904 uh, Development Environment, and then scrolling down to uh, here, where it has the the JSON file. Just control C and then control V, press OK, and then you can find the board inside of your board manager. Uh, open CM. Yeah, I already have mine installed. Uh, I have an update pending, but that's not important. Um, for today, I'm going to just be um, doing a, a pretty basic example, modifying some, some base code so that you can see how, about, how to go about doing it. Um, so for that, I'm going to go ahead and open examples. Go to examples for OpenCM904 board. I'm going to go to the SDK. I'm using an MX series, an MX430. Uh, so that's a protocol 2, and that's X series. So I'm going to go read, write, X. All right, so this is the read, write example for uh, the OpenCM904. Um, it's going to be setting up addresses for both the X, uh, XL430 Third, or 3, 320 um, and then any other X series because their firmware addresses are seri are different. You'll see for the 320 here, torque enable is 24, and for the, any other X series, it's 64. Um, so there's kind of like two different codes happening inside of this one um, file. Um, so that way it works with any X series. Um, you'll see it defines all of the addresses uh, uh, for each is torque enabled, goal position, present position. We're setting the protocol, setting the Dynamics ID, the baud rates, and then device name here is uh, which of these, I have not been recording this entire time. Um, and then device name is, uh, is which of these specific um, ports it's using. If it's using these ports here um, on the face of the OpenCM904 or if the one's on the Open uh, uh, Open 45 expansion board. Uh, into our setup, this is all things to for a serial begin and how it handles it, each of the ports. Um, it's saying like if you're using the XL320, um, you're going to be saying the present position this way, and if you're using the uh, any other X series, you're going to set position this way. It's the difference between a two byte and a four byte, so it's a 16 versus 32 bit input, which takes up different spaces on the um, uh, CPU or the the microcontroller um, on the board. 
Um, so after that, it's going to be opening the port, it's going to be changing the baud rate, um, and it's going to be making sure that it's successfully connected to the Dynamixel. Then after that, right here is where the actual like moving of the Dynamixel happens. So it's while one, while one, um, serial print, press any key to continue, and then it's saying while serial.available is equal to zero, um, that means that you've pressed enter and there's no information on the, um, the serial. Um, it's going to say if you put a Q in there, it's going to break out and end the program, else it's going to go into, into moving the actual Dynamixel. So for the XL320, the, it's going to have a different write protocol than for the uh, any other X-Series. So this is the write for the XL320, and this is the write for any other X-Series, because um, it, it's four bits instead of two bits. Um, what's happening is in this is that the port handler here is identifying which um, bus I believe it's going to. Dynamixel port handler, get port handler, device name. Yes, so basically the, the port handler is just saying which one of the um, buses on the OpenCM 904 uh, or OpenCM 485 expansion board it's going to be using. Um, so in this case, we're using bus 3. It's saying what's the Dynamixel ID? In this case, I believe it's 1. Um, what's the goal position um, or the goal position addre firmware address? Um, what is your goal position and then uh, it's saying like if there is an error it will basically say this is the error position um, so in this case it's going to be writing to position index um, if you go up to here you'll see the positions that it has are 100 and 900 that's about a quarter of its revolution uh, and those are set as uh, index 1 and index 0 so this is just going to move it from uh, 0 to 90. Um, and then right down here, you'll see uh, it'll be reading the firmware address afterwards um, to tell you where it is at at a specific rate. And once all of that is done, it's going to index from 1 to 0 or from 0 to 1. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and upload. All right, now let's go into the serial monitor. And uh, whenever I press enter, it will move about 90 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to switch it from, instead of be pressing enter and having it move based off of like the serial uh, communication, we're going to have it move based off of this button here. Um, to do that, we have to set it up. So first of all, this button is tied to pin 16. Um, so we need to set up. Uh, a, set it up as an input. Uh, so we're going to go pin mode 16 comma input uh, closed. Now we're going to go down to this wall and instead of it being wall serial dot available we're going to delete all of this and we're going to say uh, if if uh, digital read uh, 16 is equal to high, then we're going to be uh, running this. I believe I have to put a semicolon there and another semicolon there. Okay, so now whenever we press this button, as long as you set everything up correctly, it should perform this going back and forth action. All right, it, it seems to have compiled fine. We're going to go ahead and upload it. All right, the upload is done. Serial monitor, everything has worked successfully. And now I'm gonna go ahead and press the button and it works. All right, so that's the onboard button on the uh, OpenCM 904 ex expansion board. Uh, but we actually also sell a button that, that just plugs directly into one of these sensor, um, sensor wires on the OpenCM 904. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to write for that. Let's go ahead and plug in our sensor wires. Um, and now we're going to uh, be switching up from it being a, uh, a digital read here to a completely different kind of format um, to initialize that. 
Um, in this case, we could figure out specifically what pin goes to this button, um, but there is uh, an entire library set up for um, these specific things. Um, I'm going to be referencing that right now um, by going to OpenCM904, and then we can see it inside of uh, sensors. So let's go to touch sensor. Um, that is um, what this sensor is, touch read. Okay, so include olo.h, my olo. We're going to go uh, begin touch sensor on port one, um, and then it's going to say uh, touch read equals touch sensor. So I'm just going to go ahead and snag this information, put it at the top so it includes the correct um, the correct uh, .h files. I'm going to go into our setup here um, when we are initializing our serials, um, and we are going to take this uh, myolo.begin touch sensor um, so that it has also another serial connection, uh, and then we are going to put in. Uh, my Olo dot read one touch sensor, and then we are going to put that in place of this digital read. So done. If if uh, my Olo dot read uh, sensor one, it's a touch sensor, is high, then it will do this. Now let's make sure that it'll compile correctly. Fingers crossed and it compiled correctly. We're going to go ahead and upload it into our board. And we'll go ahead and start, and it should be every time I press this button here, it'll turn. And just like that, and if I hold it, it'll turn back and forth because it's sending out high constantly. Nice. Um, if you wanted to connect an everyday, um, just regular um, yeah, button to this, you could still use these pins. You just have to figure out what they are. Um, I'm, I'm going to post in the description um, kind of like a matrix of what each of these pins are. Um, uh, it took me a little bit of time with a, uh, a multimeter to figure out each of their positions. Uh, they, what pins are being used by those sensors is recorded in our e-manuals, but their positions are not. Um, if this was helpful for you guys, uh, please uh, leave a like and comment down below. Um, and if you have any other videos let us, uh, that you'd like to see, let us know. Um, it really helps the channel out. Um, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.